Hey, y'all. Hello. Okay, so if everyone wants to put their attendance in the um, chat, that would be good. Just turn my volume down. So, looks like that worked. Okay, so um, welcome. Hope everyone had a good week. So, currently we're going to do some roundtable updates. So, um, and agenda announcements. So basically for the agenda, um, the way it's set up now is if you have your request for agenda in by 5 p.m. Monday night. This week was a little bit different simply because Monday was a holiday and we weren't in. So I think that's how it's been done normally. I don't know if that's how everyone wants to keep doing it, but I think that's the most efficient way so that we can get the agenda ready and then posted for the public before the meeting begins. And that'll be on a first come first serve basis. So, you know, the agenda is full or the, you know, the meeting time's full, then we may have to push it off a week or we can have conversations about that afterwards. Um, so is there any objections to that 5 p.m. time? Uh, no, um, or not for me, but I do have uh, something to add. I told Chad over here, I see him in the room from elections. He could speak before I talk to everybody about it. 10 minutes in front of the uh, meeting today. Do we have time to add that in today? Can we wait till? Towards the, towards the end. Is that okay with you, Chad? But if you guys have something that you want to. Go ahead. I think we should pursue the agenda first. That's just my two cents. Yeah. Okay. Because there's a good chance that we would have time remaining. Oh, definitely. And we could maybe put that time towards it. But I also wanted to suggest we, uh, I'm not sure if we did the attendance off the bat. Right? Did we? Is that like done? I have attendance right here. Is that okay with you, Chad? Can you speak at the end? Yeah, okay, present. thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, so we'll have. I think what do we have? Community. Okay, so we're going to go through with the round table, just, you know, kind of getting there. Uh, say, Cab, any updates? I know I don't know if you're meeting this week, but. So, um, say, Cab, <clears throat> we're kind of out of session till August currently. Um, some general kind of things um, to be aware of. Um, they're looking at changing some bylaws in Say, Cab. Um, they're still going through the process, and I believe the new committee or the new kind of council, once they get in, will vote to approve them, whether or not. Um, so those are still in the process. I'm still looking at those as well. Second thing is, um, I think MSU is chairing this year's say cab. So either Stephanie or I will be chair say cab, depending on when it is. So that's all I have for say cab so far. Awesome. Um, I don't know if I don't think Gabe's here. So normally this would be with the board of trustees. Is oh Gabe, are you present? Oh yes, great. Hi, hello everybody. Um, I'm Gabe Trujillo. Hi, Gabe. I am the student trustee. Um, good you... to meet you all. Um, board of trustee update, Gabe. Yep. Uh, can y'all hear me? Hello. Can't hear you. We can. You can hear can me. Hear you. Yes. OK, awesome. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Gabe Trujillo. I'm the student trustee. Um, I it's great to meet you all. Um, I have no update yet. Um, I my, my first uh, trustee meeting will be in July. Um, yeah. And also just a little quick thing. Um, I've been absent, gone, you know, for the last couple of weeks. Cause I, cause I've been dealing with, with some family stuff. And unfortunately, um, my mom passed away last Friday. And so I, I, I've been trying to get like, all these things settled because now I have two kids now. So that's always fun. But yeah, um, just wanted to let y'all know, but I have every intention to continue with TSAC and a student trustee. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gabe. If you need anything, feel free to reach out. Advisor updates. Yeah. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. This will probably be my last advisor update. Um, 
as Armando is slated to start June 13th. Uh, so in a little over a week, uh, he'll be on board. I'll um, be working with Armando probably for, for part of the summer at least uh, in regards to transitioning him over um, and getting him set up. Uh, and so um, this is probably not the last you guys will see of me. Dun, dun, dun. Um, <clears throat> the other uh, component, a uh, few things to talk about. So Dr. Brown asked me to mention, um, I think it was maybe last week's meeting, and Jeremy, since you're here, maybe you can correct me on this, but um, the the previous council voted to um, allocate was it three thousand dollars? Three thousand dollars um, to purchase branded. Um, I don't want to say swag, but swag slash um, sort of branded materials uh, for TSAC. If if you're not aware, um, all of the tablecloths, tents, and and signage that that we have um, it says student government assembly on it, and um, we did use it during spring fling, but it, it was a, a bit confusing for students because um, many students were thinking that TSAC was different than an SGA and uh, so on and so forth. And so essentially that $3,000 uh, we were thinking could be used towards purchasing a new tent top. Uh, so we do have the frame, um, but we would purchase a new tent top, uh, either red or blue. Um, with TSAC's name and logo on it. Um, and then that can be used throughout the year for things like Fall Fest, Spring Fling, Welcome Week, um, any other sort of outdoor um, events that TSAC is, is involved with um, can be used for that. And then uh, the other item would be um, a tablecloth or two. Um, I would recommend at least one tablecloth with the TSAC logo on it and the name. Um, both of those probably would come in somewhere around $1,000 uh, roughly and then leaving the council uh, with some extra money to determine what else uh, you feel would be necessary to purchase. Uh, last year, the um, marketing and communications department approached TSAC um, in regards to updating their, their signage outside of the office. So as, as you're probably aware that still also says student government assembly. Um, as well as some of the writing on the windows and and that sort of thing. And we did get a quote for it. It was pretty expensive. Um, I don't have the exact totals in front of me, um, but it, it would exceed, to my knowledge, I think, the, the remaining $2,000. Um, so that's something else to also consider um, as you move forward. And then, um, you know, really just determining if, there's other items that need to be purchased. In the past, SGA would purchase uh, things like pens or, or lower cost items to hand out um, to students to raise awareness and that sort of thing. And so, you know, thinking, I obviously we don't need an answer today. You, you have all summer, um, but I, I definitely do think that something should be purchased uh, before the start of fall semester. Um, so you guys are all up and running with those items. Um, so anyways, there is that piece. Um, before I move on to the next one, any questions on the the swag or the the budget allocation? Uh, it'd probably be better if we do it sooner because it's because of the delays and everything right now. It'll probably take a little while for them to print it up and make it right. Yeah, yeah, it, it's probably yeah, it's definitely best to do it now. Uh, even if we were to place the order, um, there is a lot of back and forth in regards to proofs and and you know, transit time and, and production time. And so even if we were to, I would say, place the order today, um, it would probably be a solid month before we had items in hand. And so it's definitely something you don't wanna wait until early August. I would say maybe shoot for sometime in June of determining A, what you wanna get, um, also determining uh, colors and that sort of thing, um, products. I am happy since I am familiar with ordering swag and the vendors. So we are required to go through certain vendors here at MSU. Um, I'm happy to work with whoever is interested. Um, I would suggest forming a committee. Uh, so it could be marketing and promo committee or swag committee, whatever. Um, 
you know, if maybe two counselors, maybe three. Um, and I'm happy to work with them on sort of getting them in the right or uh, pointing them in the right direction in terms of the vendors to work with and reaching out for quotes and that sort of thing. Um, but it does take a while. Uh, even just ordering things like pens can take it's a lot of back and forth communication. Um, so yeah, that's that's my suggestion there. Um, um, absolutely. What, what do you think about uh, just voting on the just the tent top and the tablecloth now so we can get on it and then we could form a committee about the other thousand dollars or whatever we do with the remaining later so we could just get that ball rolling we vote on that right now just to prove it so he could just go ahead and do that two grand um, i don't think we need a committee to discuss the tent top let's, let's, i have a i have a question uh, actually really before we vote Sorry, on yeah so um, i'm kind of confused about is it just TSAC that has to go through these specific vendors? Because um, I know for a lot of student orgs, they go through different uh, vendors and get better prices and they can get it to you quite like a, a, a really much faster, honestly. Um, I know for a couple student orgs, they went through vendors of, you know, their choosing and they went through the school, got like the payment sent to them or whatever. Um, and it was a lot faster of a process and a lot cheaper. Um, we also, I think, are getting our it's not like a tent but we one of our student orgs also got something else um I, oh the table cover um and it, it was expensive but i'm pretty sure it wasn't a thousand dollars um along those lines but i don't know if that was just tsac that has to go through those specific vendors or if it's like it doesn't matter because we're still technically i guess a student org i'm not really sure the political uh, the politics of it but um i just want to make sure that like that's a for sure thing that we have to because i've literally just experienced not having to go through any specific vendors it's just that yeah. they're preferred yeah um so in regards to that so with the university uh when it comes to any when it comes to clothing and signage so anything that you wear such as hats you know hoodies that sort of thing or signage so signage could be um i don't know i i guess signage would fall under um a tablecloth, um, those two are exempt. So clothing and signage, you can go with any vendor of your choice. Any other items, um, we are required to go through, I think there's four approved vendors um, on campus. And so there may have been a situation where, you know, a student organization purchased an item and, and, and if it was clothing or some form of signage, um, in that case, you can go with anybody. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the past, the the tablecloths that we've ordered through CMEI, we have been required to go through um, one of the approved vendors. And typically, I would say, you know, at least for the tablecloths, they're they're pretty competitive. With you know, if you were to just Google search um, branded tablecloths, they're they're usually about the same price. Um, but yeah, definitely, some vendors can especially our approved vendors um when it comes to clothing you can, you can always find things cheaper elsewhere and so um that is one area that is uh available um so yeah just some thoughts there any other questions before i move on to the next thing because i want to make sure there's enough time for everything here so just the thought i would say from here I would say right now it is definitely I would recommend voting to move forward with the tent in the tablecloth. Um, um, and I'll, then I'm I'll go ahead and make a motion to vote right now if someone wants to second that. I'll second that. Okay. And we're well, we're voting on anything. We're voting just on the tent and the tablecloth. Okay. Okay. And okay. mm -hmm. clarify the motion exactly what we're uh, going to be voting on. We're voting on uh, spending uh, two thousand dollars approximately or giving a. Uh, permission for this gentleman to order our tent and tablecloth for approximately $2,000 or whatever it is. You're going to look for the best deal, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just to vote on letting him do that now. Yeah, and I, I, I maybe don't put a dollar amount to okay. it because what my thought is, is I can, next week I can get pull quotes from vendors and then essentially email all of you. Okay. um and say here's the quotes here's what here's the proofs here's what it's going to look like have you all get give feedback and then from there um you know you all can you know either vote or give the thumbs up and say move forward i, I wouldn't say i would hesitate to say approving two thousand dollars right now because in the event that it comes in over yeah um, which i don't think it would um but then you would have to come back in a meeting and vote 
uh, again for the extra. So I would just hold off on the dollar I'll amount. I'll clarify it as we're voting on a motion for you to uh, purchase the tent top and the. Yeah. Top. Yeah. Okay. You still second that, Mike? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> All right. We'll go. Oh, we'll move to voting. Alan. Yay. <clears throat> Stephanie. Michael. Yeah. James. Yay. Yeah. Bree. Hi. Yay. Taylor. <laughs> yes. I, Dan, I, Gabe. Gabe, are you there? All right, we'll circle back. Alex isn't here. Naomi is I. Chad is not here. Uh, how about Paul? Nay. I would have liked some period of discussion prior to the vote, but um, I think I'm not sure if I voice it at the right time, so my apologies. But nay. Yeah. And I want to make sure I made a miss the first couple of votes. So if I could get the like the first three again, if that's all right. My apologies. Alan, Michael, and James. Alan, Michael, and James. Gotcha. Um, all said yes, and gotcha. Gabe said yes. Okay. okay that's. Yep, so that passed. Um, all right, so Dave, do you still have some more announcements on that? Uh, yeah, just really, I won't take as long on this next one. So uh, the other item was um, kind of extends from the previous council uh, near the end is they were talking about, or they actually voted to approve um, hiring a, I guess would be an, a secretary slash office manager. Uh, and so a uh, bit last year, again, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong, because my memory is a little fuzzy, but at some point during the year, I want to say late fall, early spring, that conversation started uh, in regards to the need of a student employee uh, that would handle um, basic administrative tasks for the council, such as meeting notes. So they would be present during meetings to, to record minutes, um, post those minutes. They would update the website. If you if you look at the website right now, there's it, it's in dire need of of some updating. Um, they would post the recordings of the meetings. Uh, they would have office hours. Uh, they would what else, Jeremy? I'm like spacing on. There was a bunch of things that we tasked that we'd have this person do. Um, essentially, it was a 15 to 20 hours per week. Um, and it would be a work study position, meaning their their pay would not come out of the budget. Um, and that that was the the initial goal for that position. Um, this is another one sort of getting since we are in with a new council, it's it's really, you know, your decision. Do you do you a want one um, and then B, um, you know, when timeline, time frame, that sort of thing. Um, my before you all discuss and, and, and sort of vote, I guess, a um, few things that I would suggest is if you do move forward, getting the position posted over the course of the summer, because uh, it takes a long time, especially during the summer months, uh, to hire a student. Uh, there's just, as you can see, there's not many students on campus. Students aren't really looking for on-campus jobs at this time of the year. Um, and so posting it now um, so we can get an extended amount of time of visibility, I would suggest with the goal of maybe having someone start up in August. Um, I mean, that would be the ultimate goal for that. Um, and then uh, B, uh, having, again, a council member to work with me on, on putting together a job description. I know the old council had a rough draft put together, uh, so it essentially be revisiting that, um, sharing it with the council, and then officially posting it. Um, so just some thoughts there in that position. Clarify, you said that that wouldn't come out of our budget? Would not? It would not. If it's work, so when it comes to student employment, you can either have work study only, 
which means um, their their hours, uh, their hourly pay is paid out of work study funds, financial aid. So it doesn't come out of you know the department's budget. Or you can do hourly, which their hourly rate would come out directly from the TSAC budget. Now I will say in experience, it you know we have a limited number of students that are eligible for work study, and then there's a cap on the number of hours they can work. Um, some students will exceed their work study allocation halfway through the semester. And so I would just be a little prepared to cross that bridge if it does come up. So if you do approve the 15 to 20 hours and we do find someone, they may not be eligible to work up to 15 or 20, it may be 10. And so just that, whereas, whereas hourly, there's really no limitations. The limitation is your budget. Um, but if you're paying someone at minimum wage of 1587, per hour times 20 hours a week, that definitely adds up over the course of the semester. Um, and so something to think about there. Now you can do both. I have students that work for me that um, are on work study and then when they exhaust their work study funds in the semester, we that kicks into hourly. Um, so that's an option to think of is, is doing sort of the combination. Um, or you just stick with what's given to you for work study and see how that goes. Um, I would say at the very least, 10 hours um, would be super helpful. It would be great to have someone for a little more. Um, just by seeing the amount of work that the council put in this last year of what this person would do. Um, so yeah. Um, okay, so I guess let's discuss that. Mike. So um, I miss a Mr. Stan, so this was not voted upon yet. So this is the only suggestion. Last council did not vote on this. No, they they vote on it. They voted on it at the end of their term to approve it. However, they are no longer, and it's now you. So that's does that make sense? So yeah, that makes more sense. Now it's kind of up to you. They they voted on it, but their term expired, so they were not able to act upon it. Passed it. They did. They passed it. Yeah. I support I support the, the getting that person. Um, it would definitely help cutting down on the chair's work. You know, making the agendas um, each week, gathering all the stuff. A bunch of emails is stuff that happens every week, as well as you know various miscellaneous tasks as things come up. I think that would be um, definitely a good a good thing to vote on again or have. I so, agree. is anyone opposed? To that or have any comments otherwise or even in in favor of it yeah um when i was on SACAB, we have we had a secretary named nicole he still works there um he was immensely helpful and i highly recommend that tsec does the same it was very made things a lot easier for the chair of SACAB, um just because the they could really just take on just leading the meetings and being a point of contact but nothing Nothing else, so they could focus on just being the chair. And I, yeah, I would second that. It was, uh, it was a game changer for SACAB um, with them hiring a secretary. Uh, he, I mean, the student was a rock star to begin with, but it was also, um, it really helped with organization and um, really just having up to date information posted. And and I think one of the struggles is is keeping that website uh, updated. Uh, oftentimes you'll get students uh, that will approach asking why minutes haven't been posted or where the recordings are for meetings. And, and so that's definitely an area of improvement that I would definitely make sure that this person focuses on. Uh, Paul. I, for one, would support having a secretary. Um, one of the things I did over the past couple of days working in the office was I listened to our voicemails after I set up our phones. And I was listening to new voice. I was listening to new voicemails from 2000 from October 2021, asking simple questions like, hey, I'm in a I had some recording, but they have phone numbers, so I'll avoid playing them. But um, one person had asked, I'm in a report. I'm in a, I'm in a media class, media literacy or something like that. And I'd like to ask my student government some questions. And from what I could tell, I think my media later wrote a wrote something about how they just their students weren't able to um, like do this project that was based on the student government. So I think if we have a secretary, we have someone answering phones, 
we have someone checking the voicemail, we have someone ensuring that we don't let that same lapse of communication happen so that, you know, we can conserve that role and maintain a transparent student government. Any other comments before we either move on or someone motions this, uh, this idea of a, of a secretary being hired? I don't think we would have to motion on it since it's there now. It would oh. be a motion to get rid of it. Uh, Gabe. Awesome. Can, can you all hear me? Yeah, OK, beautiful. Um, yeah, so I also just got to agree, you know, um, having secretary would be great. Um, I remember last year and stuff while, while, while I was chair and stuff, it's a lot of work. And so I definitely think like, having somebody who is who their job would just be to help out and stuff and, and get that website up and running and really hone in on it and stuff would really be a huge help. So I'm all for sticking with what um, the previous council voted on and then just continuing with it. Thank you, Gabe. So I guess does anyone want a motion to not continue with the hiring process or for uh, the secretary that was voted on last uh, council? Going once. OK, so then we'll go ahead and start that process or you know, OK that for this council and we'll go start going through the motions um, with Dave. Yeah, so I guess what I'll do is uh, pull up the job description. Right, we created a rough draft, Jeremy. I'll pull that up, um, send that to the council uh, sometime next week so you all can review it. And if there's any additions, you know, just to double check and make sure that that's exactly what you want. Um, and then usually uh, it takes a, a couple of days to get it posted on the HR website. Um, and once it's posted, uh, I, I think probably what I'll do is since I'll be transitioning soon is, is um, probably make Dr. Barone the hiring manager um, or Armando. Um, that way, um, you know, in the event that, you know, we don't get applicants until July, um, it, it'll be one of those two that sort of manages and supervises that role. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more. I'll, I'll send something out next week. Is that all your updates, Dave? Or, or... All right, so then if that's all the updates from the advisor, let's uh, go over to the social media team. Alex, Paul, Chad. Paul, I think that might be you. Mm -hmm. All I want to say with the social media team is um, we're, we've been talking and, and uh, plan to meet online at some point in, in this next week. Um, we're still working to coordinate a time to do so. Um, but one of the things that I personally want to prioritize is making the meeting minutes just immediately and easily accessible. I know that when I tried to research some of them coming into the council, I had to request access. So I want to like break down that barrier and, um, you know, just create a nice um, transparent website. And I know the secretary will probably be a huge help in that too. Um, yep, that's all I have to say on it. Thank you. OK, that brings us to our next section of the agenda. Um, here's the rundown of the TSAC email. So everybody should, every council member should now have access to the T-Mobile or the T-Mobile, excuse me, the, the TSAC email. Um, I guess if anyone doesn't have access or doesn't know how to access it, they should reach out to me or some, yeah, me or Alan, and we can go over how that's going to work and how you can access that. Um, I guess the next thing we kind of want to decide on is how the monitoring of that email is going to be done. Obviously, right now is the summer, so there's probably going to be less emails coming through, but I do think it's important that we monitor that and we don't leave leave emails and you know the not not responded to within a timely manner. So um yeah, how, how does everybody think it should be checked on or is anybody wanting to do it or or any ideas? Um uh, yeah, Kayla, I want to comment. comment on this. Um I believe it would be very good to have the expectation for the chairs and the secretary to monitor it, but I think anyone can monitor and anyone can respond who wants to. I like that. Okay. 
Uh, Gabe. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree um, with Taylor um, about about having like the expectation of the chairs and secretary to monitor it, but have like everyone still on the lookout, you know, because we the more pair of eyes, the better, you know, to make sure we don't skip over anything. Um, and then also just making sure that like if, if you do respond from that email, um, putting like your name as a respondent and stuff, so so we know who from the council sent out what email. And we just can keep uh, track of things. You have access to a microphone. So re-put maybe yeah. a message. Oh, okay. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Gabe. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just agree with, with, what, with what Taylor said about um, having it um, as, as a chair and secretary expectation, but everyone should look at, at it and stuff. And just when people um, sign like uh and, and whoever responds to any email and stuff to just make sure that they put their name as well cool. so we know who's uh writing what thank you gabe got that thank you um so re put in the chat maybe a message to the rest of us is kind of seconding what gabe just said uh that someone has replied and we keep a 20 uh, keep that 24 hour response time in mind she continued, surely there's already an automated response set up or we can update it for this year. Actually, I have updated it and gave put an automatic response of 72 hours in the automated message and then said if it's an emergency, I threw me and Alan's um, emails in there just in case they need to reach us sooner. So, all right. The OneDrive. So everyone also has access to the SharePoint, the OneDrive. Again, if you don't, please reach out to me. Um, my email is up, or yeah, just reach out to me um, or Alan so we can get access to that, but everybody should have access to that. Um, that's where progress logs are gonna go. There's folders in there. There's also, you know, uh, meeting minutes is in there so that when the social media team wants to post something to the website or to the social media, it's in there, they can pull it from there. So does anyone have any questions or anything about that uh, SharePoint at this point? Okay, so progress logs. In the handbook currently is the council members are supposed to keep progress logs. Um, there has been some discussion via teams about not starting that because our, our actual responsibilities don't start until August. Um, but currently in the handbook now, it is in effect that we need to be doing these things. So maybe we either wanna vote to not do that till August or, or we, you know, somehow amend that in some way. Um, so let's have some discussion on that. Uh, Paul? I would make a, I'd, I'd make a motion to suspend the rules regarding the activity logs until we develop an improved system of accountability. I, I can speak to that. Anyone wants to know my two cents? I'll second it, please. Um, well, let's, let's yes. first, just you second it. Okay, what do you explain exactly what you're, can you elaborate a little bit more on that, Paul? So my thought process on this, just in, in my uh, discussions with like um, former, or. Uh, in my discussions with um, members of the previous council, it has come to my understanding that the uh, activity logs weren't being done by everyone, right? And yet they, they, they're they in our handbook as something that has to be done by everyone. And so I see this like de facto de jure like, split between like what we say we're doing and then what we're actually doing. And I say that until we can develop a system of accountability that works and that is, is um, is both in our handbook and, and practiced by us all. Um, we should forego the current one or suspend the rules in the meantime. Uh, Mike. Um, I'm in total agreement of the of agreement in this, but I think we should definitely put it like a time period because we I want to like definitely like touch back on this like next week and like have a time period set where we need to have these new rules in place so it doesn't just keep on going on if it's something we choose to do. I agree with that, and I think maybe the motion, if someone's going to motion on this, to con to the motion contains a date in which we need to have this done by, you know, kind of like a deadline. Because my concern is that it gets pushed off, and then it becomes on the back burner, and then there's no accountability and and um, all of that. And it's plus, it's good to keep, you know, to kind of know what what you've done. So if someone comes up and says, "Hey, I voted you in," what have you done? You know, so there's more than just because of the handbook. It's also just a good practice, probably to have overall. So I I would be concerned if we don't set a date to 
maybe re talk about this or implement that um, thing. So that's what I have. Alan. How about for a date we use a <clears throat> school start August? That'll give us plenty of time to come up with a new formula that works. Does anybody else think? I agree with that. I mean, that's perfect because technically we're on volunteer time as well. So definitely when everyone gets back, we can start have it in place for everyone to show this how you can tell our accountability what we're doing. I agree with that. Does anybody else have any questions regarding this before? I'm just saying we'd motion to amend the motion so that um, instead it is a uh, we like uh, we suspend it definitely until August 1st, we want to say, or? Sure. It, I think or the first meeting of August? We, we should be able to get it done in a month. So is this extending it to just re-implement the, the, the progress log starting in August or to not to table it and talk about it in August? Yeah. Oh, we're going to come question. up with a whole new system, I think, uh, that, uh, and we're probably going to end up maybe ditching the project logs. I think yeah. personally, I, I like that's my hope that we do that. Yeah. But I think that the point of a definite suspension in your is that we wouldn't go without doing anything. And that worst case, if it was if people for for went like resolving it, we would go back to having the accountability a lot starting in August. OK, I don't know if that's what you intended to do, but that's. I'm split either way. Yeah, like that, that uh, leaves it less hanging in the hair at least. So if nothing does get touched on, at least it's re-implemented and we're. Um, going to be required to do that according to the handbook and being um, being accountable to the students that elected us to this position. So, all right. So you motion, Paul, or? Second. Yeah, I second the motion Paul made. Let me say it again. <laughs> Sorry, motion to amend the motion, the prior motion. Uh, to a suspension of the rules regarding the activity logs um, until we develop an improved system of accountability or August 1st. And so on the resolution of one of those two. Things. I want to make a comment, sorry. Um, since the summer is voluntary work, I'm not sure if there should be a accountability system since what we're doing right now, you don't necessarily need to be accountable for working since it is voluntary. That's my perspective. But once the semester starts, for sure. Well, okay. I second that motion that Paul made, so. OK, so then we'll move to voting. Alan. Yes, I support the motion. Michael. I support the motion. James. I support the motion. Bree. I, I support and will want to work on something. I don't know if you want to note all this, but <laughs> that we can keep up with our work for next year starting in August. Yes. <laughs> Good, thank you. Taylor. Yes. I support it. Gabe. Yes. Uh, Naomi. Yeah, I support it. And Paul. Aye. OK, so that passes. I want to make one comment though regarding this. I do think it's a good idea that everybody does. If somebody does something for the council or something that because it's voluntary and you're volunteering your time, at least keep track of it, I think, for your own for your own records and for the records of the council so that there's the work that is being done can't be questioned. You know, like, well, you guys aren't doing anything or anything like that. So that's just the comment I'll have on that. Not that it's going to be checked by anybody or anybody's the boss over anybody else. I just think it's a good idea. OK, so that passed. Now we'll move on to. The TSAC office, so basically I, I think it's a good to have a discussion about when and if the TSAC office is going to be open during the summer. If so, when, how it's going to be. Is there going to be set times? Is someone just going to be in there when they get there? Or is there something that we can have like hours where students can ex expect us in there so they can come to talk at any point, um, give us their concerns, their likes, everything, their joys, as well as things that we can work on? Or how do we want to do that? So let's uh, start a discussion on that. Anybody? 
Yes, as this is voluntary during the summer, um, I think you can contribute your office hours voluntarily. You can make your own schedule if you really would like to, but I do not think there should be an expectation for there to be office hours for the whole council. I agree with Taylor, especially regarding the summer work, um, knowing that no one's being compensated for the work during the summer. It should be totally voluntary. No schedule during the summer is my perspective. Um, I have been spending some time in the office. Mike has too. I've noticed some others. And I think that, you know, um, ad for the summer, adopting the policy of we're open when we're in. And if you see our sign that says we're open, we're open. But I think we could reconsider having a schedule come the school year where we can maybe circle back on it. But I agree with Taylor regarding the um, not having an official schedule, but just being in when we can be during the summer. Or if you want to make a schedule for yourself, feel free. But I also think maybe there should be um, like, of course, we have our email and the phones so people can always reach us there and we can circle back with them. I support that. I, I agree with that as well. That's a good, good point. Um, point in the chat that Jeremy just said that we should notify the public of these um, new expectations for the summer. Yeah, maybe a a sign on the door saying we're open when we're open type thing. Um, please come in and feel free to um, come in whenever it's on and reach out via email or telephone if you'd like to meet and we can talk to you one-on-one -on -one about that. Um, all right, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Now, what about weekly TSAC meetings? Although, so we are in one right now, started at 2.30 this week. Um, we are gonna have to re reserve this room specifically if we are to continue having meetings here over the summer. Um, I think if this time's open, it can it can be um, in this room. Now, again, this is voluntary. I and mean, I did send out a doodle poll. I got all responses, but but one. And uh, the majority was to have the majority was to have the meeting from two to three on Fridays. Not everybody was specifically chose that time. Um, there was a few people that said I can if I if I'm able and um, yeah, but the majority of the 11 people that um, did that supported this time. So let's talk a little bit about that. Alan, I support the time. So now you have 12. <laughs> Anybody? So oh, uh, James. Hi everyone. Uh, so for me, I'm out here in DC for anyone who doesn't know. So I'm two hours ahead. Um, most times probably won't work for me only because I am working like nine to five. And then on top of that, we have events typically after work. Um, so I know it's voluntary, so I probably won't be able to attend almost all of the meetings during the summer, but I will definitely try to attend as many as possible. So whatever time you guys choose, um, definitely works for, uh, well, won't work for me, but I'll try to attend as much as I can. Thank you, James. Uh, Michael. Um, so actually, I do have a question then. So how do we just say generally when what times we won't be here? Because in two weeks, I will not be able to attend that meeting at all. I'll be. What is the process for notifying everyone of that? Taylor. Um, again, since this is voluntary work, you don't have to announce to anyone at this point. Um, I will in. Gosh, I think it's eight days I leave for Spain, so I will be nine hours ahead. So I will not be able to come to any of the summer meetings until August. Uh, go ahead. I'll say just a courtesy notification is enough. It's not like a rule or anything, but just be courteous so we all know what we have to make up for if you're not going to be here. Uh, or when I send out, are we sending out, um, I guess, is it a general is this hand, uh, invitation every week? Is that how teams work? Oh, okay, continuous email. I guess if the RSVP comes and you can't, maybe if you have the wherewithal to decline it, but otherwise, since it is voluntary, I would say nothing needs to be done per se. Obviously, if there's not, we can't really vote on anything if there's not quorum anyway. So it's mostly just a discussion to kind of keep the momentum going, some ideas and things we can, you know, work towards and um, all of that for the fall. So anybody else? In the chat, Jeremy has a note about the handbook. Ah, uh, yes. So Jeremy put the handbook states an email RSVP with the invitation. That's kind of what I touched on. So when I, when the the um, invitation comes out, you can just uh, decline it or tentative. Tentative might be a good one. So all right. Website. 
So this is kind of along the same talks as the social media team. So I think it's a good idea that the social media team get access to the passwords and usernames personally. Um, so that when, you know, uploading minutes and all of that, um, and um, all of that so that we can do that. Also, another good place, even though it's been hard to in the past to access the minutes on the website, I think it's good that we kind of make us figure out how to transition to the new website because this thing we need to, you know, put up our pictures, our bios and all the things kind of like that. So um, social media team, have you, I guess, yeah, this is mostly just to open up the floor about the website when it comes to, to all of that. I do know that I'm going, Senna was the one who was doing the website before, and she's going to circle back next week and try to get some of that. I think it's a good idea if we have a conversation with at least these three that are on the social media team, but I'm sure, and website team, but everybody should, whoever wants to have access to that and be able to amend that stuff I'm, is welcome to. Uh, Paul? I have some good experience with like websites, so I'd, I'd be happy to, in the meantime, while we're still working on acquiring that, you know, secretary, do the changes we want to make. Um, but I'm just like you waiting on Senna for next week. I got the email saying that she planned on getting back to us shortly. And so that's all I'm waiting on to get rolling with the uh, social media stuff is just passwords and, um, you know, what exactly you use to access the website. I'm not sure how they maintain it at, at present. Yeah, thank you. Um, also, I think we do actually have the password so we can pass those along after the meeting for those who are interested in doing that. Um, anybody else? Yeah, Jeremy says, uh, I have the passwords and will forward to the social media team. Thanks, Jeremy. Okay. Bios. I think Stephanie did send out a message about us getting getting the bios up on to the social media folk, folks to um to basically have our bios on the social media and on the website. So I think Stephanie requests within the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure if Stephanie's going to continue being the head of that social media team. So I guess it would we should work on doing that. I don't know if everybody has. I personally haven't got my bio to the social media team yet, but I, I'm going to work towards that. So I think if you all want your uh, pictures and bio or anything on the website on social media, it's probably good to pass that to um, Paul, Chad. Or Alex, uh, Michael. So this is Beige's question for Paul. When would you like that information? Like what's in, in like a timeline for when you want that? Because I still um, don't really have a good idea of what we're working with, with the, when it comes to the website, because um, I know different places use different management styles. Um, I don't have a hard number for you, but it'd be cool if you could try and get it in before the end of June, because then we could, you know, I, I you know, I think we should want to have our website like the way we want it prior to the, the beginning of the semester. Like we should try and get it so it doesn't say student government assembly and says TSAC on the the uh, the student hub. I don't know if what we have access to gives us the same amount of elevation to change what's on the student hub, but um, I don't know. There's a lot that we need to look at first before you get any like deadlines, but try and get your bios in um, as soon as you can would be good. Sooner the better. Thank you, Paul. Any other questions or concerns about website, social media stuff from anybody? OK, um, next one. Uh, constitution. Hopefully everybody in the council has read over the Constitution um, and that stuff, you know, considering it's the governing document or one of them. Um, I heard some discussion outside of here about you know, changes to it, this and that. I say now is a good time to open up the floor um, to council members to at least voice concerns, ideas, anything like that when it comes to the Constitution. I know um, it was worked on by the last council pretty hard. So let's, um, anyone want to talk about the, you know, have some ideas, want to talk concerns about the Constitution as it sits now and any ideas on what we should do moving forward with that? It is considering it is the governing document. Paul. This has just been my thought process and considering um, parts of the Constitution over the last like. Last week or so, uh, and that's that um, 22 council council members would be quite a lot, especially considering the stipend we have now. Um, 
if you were to multiply our stipend times 22 council members, we would be we would be like at 108% of our budget. And so I I personally think we should reassess exactly how many um, students we expect a single council member to represent. And I personally think that 2000 would be a much more comfortable number because if you take the amount of students that go to, to Metro, you divide it by, uh, or you divide by like 2000, you end up with something like 11.8. And so um, that would put us with the council we have now, and it would give us room in our budget to actually pursue programming and stuff th throughout the year. Um, that's just what I think about the, that's my initial thoughts on the constitution. I definitely think we should workshop different elements of it, make it our own, you know, improve it where we can. But that's my thoughts off the bat, if anyone has. I think we should form some committees, uh, at least form a committee on when it comes to the governing documents or or the Constitution. I don't know how really workshopping it would be with via email and all that. I think that might be a good a good spot for a committee or a subcommittee okay. to to be formed at some point. So I, agree. Not, I don't know if now is necessarily the time to do that. Um, I guess unless someone wants to motion on it. Otherwise, we do we can get it in the agenda for next meeting to, you know, it's time to set up the various um, committees or else we could also wait to do that. So people get back from their uh, wonderful things they're doing this summer abroad around the world. So, um, Alan, I would support a motion to uh, form the committee to work on the handbook and the Constitution right now. If anybody wants to second it, we could take some volunteers and form it and be something we do over the next month. Um, I'd like to hear from the people who are like not going to be here the next few weeks to see what they think yeah. before I support a motion like that. So I know like Taylor's been in Spain and I know um, James in DC. So I want to see what they think before I support that. We could share with them. I mean, once what we come up with our revision or whatever we do. Taylor. Yeah, we had the governing documents committee um, almost our entire time as TSAC last year. Um, we did a, there were a lot of different people on it. I was on it briefly. Um, I believe in these documents, you can see the edits that we made in the past. Yeah, um, so you can see some of the comments, reasoning behind some things. Um, and I think it's definitely, it would be great if someone, if we're passionate about changing these documents, that we do make a committee. Um, but always an issue was uh, finding times to meet with these committees, and I worry about that with this summer. James, do you have any thoughts or concerns regarding committees being formed while you're gone? Um, I mean, personally, I would like to be part of the committee. I know that through, through the summer, I won't be able to have that type of commitment, um, but I do know it's something that we kind of need to get finalized as quickly as possible. So personally, I want to be a part of it, but if it's something that I feel like the council needs to, as a, as a majority wants to get finalized as quickly as possible, I'll be in support of it. You do have time, James, to uh, view documents if we share them with you and stuff like that. I mean, put your input in. Being able think? to read everything while on top of working for Hickenlooper might not be completely easy for me. Like I said, it's a nine to five job. And then on top of that, uh, my fellow cohorts and I always have uh, events going on almost every day after work. So, I mean, right now it's pretty slow, but I, I doubt we would obviously get anything finalized within like the next week or so. But, uh, like I said, if it's something like the, uh, the whole council can agree upon, um, then I will definitely support it. But it is something I wish that I could be more part of. Well, uh, go ahead, Paul. Thank you, James. Maybe a, a, how I'm thinking about it that might, you know, put your mind at ease a little bit would be that should we form this committee? And even if it is just a fraction of our council, um, what they produce would be our founding documents, or not our founding, but would be our, our governing documents, and we would ultimately have to vote to approve them. And at that point, you know, we will all have read it. If there's anything we find disagreeable, we can at that point say, let's, I motion to amend this document. And at that point, everyone's involved, except now we have a good, a good foundation from which to, um, like, a good actionable foundation, right? And so say you read it, you like it, and you're like, okay, I support this, and we can vote to pass it. But say, you say you're say you worried that you read it 
and it has something you didn't like, we can maybe work to amend that out, have discussion on it, or, um, you know. So I think that at the end of the day, we will have total, um, like, total say as a, as a council on whether or not we adopt it. So that's just one thing I wanted to mention. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we could do something like that, then, yeah, I will definitely look into it once uh, we get more drafts out and get my thoughts on it. Awesome. Thanks. I want to mention, too, these documents can be amended at any time. There's not just one specific time where we're, we're, we're presenting them, we're amending them, then we're done for the whole year. We, now we can amend them whenever we want to. Awesome. Thank you for that. And then re-put um, in the chat, we could hold a workshop for those reviewing it to present changes to us in August, then vote afterwards. That's kind of what we've been talking about. And then also, uh, Jeremy, or somebody just put in the chat, I would like to also say that the governing documents are amendable, and that's also what Taylor just said. So that is something that can be amended over time and changed. Um, Mike? Um, if there are no comments, I would motion to form this committee. Second. All right, so we'll take a vote. Alan. I have motion and support, yes. Michael. I have motion and support. James. Aye. Bree. Aye. Taylor. Yes. I vote yes. Gabe. Gabe said yes. Naomi. Aye. Oh, aye. Paul. Aye. All right. Passes unanimously. Okay. So, perfect. Now the time we want us. Is now the time we want us. Sure. I mean, but now it's. who's open to volunteering to be or nominating anybody well i guess volunteering would probably be better at this point so who wants to volunteer for committee uh mike i was going to nominate paul for this committee as chair i would accept his nomination does anybody oppose paul's nomination nope okay and paul is the chair of that committee um yeah, so any questions regarding any of that? Anything that look mm -hmm. for Paul's emails regarding that and we can circle back around and figure out the meeting times. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta have to do a motion, right? Oh, it's up to you. Okay, so. Oh, oh yeah, no one opposed. Yeah, so no one opposed. Okay, so Paul, you are the chair of that. As I said, OK. Who who wants to volunteer themselves to be members of the committee? I'd love to be part of this committee, but I don't know if I will be able to give it the time that I would like to give it. I volunteer. Same. One thing I wanted to say, if I could quickly just butt in as chair of the committee, my plan is to adopt a like a hybrid form of collaboration on it. They'll be asynchronous, but we'll also have opportunities to meet in person in the office. So do know that if you're out there and you're like, gosh, I'm really busy. I don't know if I'll be able to get time, but I want to participate. Do know that I will try my best as chair to work you into our collaboration process using Word Online or Google Docs, whatever you decide on there. I'll be on the committee as well. I'll volunteer to be on the committee as well. How many people do you want? Many as we can get. <laughs> Wait, there, I'll no volunteer cap too. Okay. Honestly, don't think we should cap it. It's, I mean, that's my two cents. If someone disagrees and thinks it'd be more effective in, in a small number, I think this is democratic. I'll be on it too. Yep. I, oh, okay, Taylor. All right, sounds good. All right, so if anybody's interested in reaching out, I mean reaching out, excuse me, participating in that committee or you know, has a change of heart later, 
Can I nominate Alex? Just tentatively. Oh no, he would go one. Okay. I know he's not here. I don't know. Would we need him to accept it? For for co chair or for just to to be a member? Just to be a member. Oh, I don't yeah. Okay. So, or maybe we can just leave it open. Is that let's get on members at any time? Yeah. Oh, then we're fine. Yeah, no, we've we've created it. It's created. Vote on that. Okay. All right. Kind of along the same lines as the Constitution. What about the um how does everyone feel about the mission statement, the current mission statement of TSAC that's in the handbook, like a two paragraph little thing? Um, yeah, so I guess we can open up the floor to discussion on that, people's thoughts, ideas, um, if it even needs to be changed, um, if it should be sc scrapped completely and then re reworded, however that that works out. Uh, Alan? I think we should just include it in this uh, com com chair committee with the founding documents. It's such a simple thing. It's all part of the same type of deal. Maybe we can just help us move along. I like that idea. As well, um, re put after after reviewing it. I think it works fine. Does that mean you you want to keep the um, mission statement the same? Well, I don't. I'll do whatever everybody else thinks. I mean, we can work on it, you know, as a group if you'd like. But if we needed to vote today, I'd say it works fine. OK, so, uh, Paul. Personally, I think new council, new mission, new year. We should have a new and unique mission statement to reflect our understanding that we we, we face a new year, new challenge. Um, I agree. I also personally think a mission statement should be short and sweet. That's my two cents. And so I did have a suggestion for one, and um, I'll, I'll read it out here and maybe even motion that we adopt it if, if people like it. But um, the mission statement here reads uh, to advocate for the interests of the Metropolitan State Unit, this the Metropolitan State University student body. We seek to reimagine what's possible in student advocacy in building a functional student government that empowers our fellow students. And so mm -hmm. um, it's a lot shorter than our last one, a bit more general, and we definitely tried to hit a lot of the same points. Um, anybody have any Anybody feel strongly about it? I like it. I, I think it's great. Um, I think he has a very good point that you do need to um, have a sense of representing like the new upcoming government because we are not the old ones. We are the new ones and we're trying to do something, um, you know, that represents how we want to run things. Um, and I think he's right. Like mission statements. If you ask anybody like, I mean, maybe more professional people they might really read into our you know mission statement and be like oh wow this is like really fun no but the majority of people the majority of students we don't have time to go through and pick out something and read it like when they ask us what we're about we're not going to pitch them a paragraph a student's not going to sit there and listen to us for 10 minutes going on about like what we're about we want to tell them directly what we're about what we're here to do and, and then if they want to be you know um you know intrigued with furthermore what we're into then we can explain in further detail but something of the generalization of what we do I think is great and I think Paul you did an amazing job I really like that thank you Naomi I appreciate that I just you know I want to echo what you've said and say um you know we, we don't have time to spit a paragraph at somebody and honestly a mission statement we need to um it needs to be in line with what our mission is and so that's also why I wanted to hear if anyone has any like critical um feedback about it because this emission statement should in fact be what we plan to do here and what i plan to do as a student counselor to the best of my ability is try and build a functional student government that empowers our fellow students you know and to and to advocate for their interests generally so um if there's anything that we think would be within our mission that's not stated there i'd be happy to um include something but i think um Otherwise, I mean, if if nobody else objects, I'd, I'd motion that we adopt it as the new mission statement. I do have one thing to say that we might want to add in there um, just to include something about our the MSU's overall goal of being inclusive and diverse. I don't know how to like include those two words in there right off the top of my head because honestly, my brain is still fried from this morning. But um, <laughs> I think that would be a good idea to add that in there um, just to kind of increase the ability or I guess 
I'm trying to think of words here, increase um, students being intrigued with us. Perfect, sounds good. Um, is anybody opposed? So we have to, the agenda time, although the meeting time was from 2.30 to 4, the agenda has public comment coming up in one minute. Um, is anybody opposed to um, having the do governing documents committee talk about the mission statement so we don't have to vote on anything today or make any um, comments? So that'll give us some, some folks who haven't read it time to be critical of it. And then um, so we can talk about it in the committee. Is anyone opposed to allowing this to be tabled to the committee to discuss that alongside the con uh, Constitution and whatnot? OK, so then that will be uh, on the agenda along with the Constitution for the. Uh, governing Documents Committee, so now. We open up the floor to public comment. Do we have any public comment. Thank you. So I think when looking at the mission statement, um, mission statements, yes, it's of this body, but it's also of the body that you're representing. So if you have not socialized your mission statement with the people that you're also serving, then it's feeding in and of itself. Um, so yes, you want to be objective as the new council, what you want to do, but that's where you center around your initiatives. But I think the inclusion of the student body along the process of what do they think student advocacy looks like for them will help to inform the mission statement and then thus build that interconnected um, shared governance value that we have as an institution. I would also encourage you all to look at the diversity strategic plan um, that just came out not too long ago um, to Naomi's point about informing um, how this council will be representing the students. Also, we keep using student government. It's a council. We abolish the student government. So the whole premise in terms of how we even operate is different. Um, so I think that needs to be a part of the consideration process too. And then I think also pulling on executive administrators in terms of the strategic plan um, and the strategic mission and values. I don't know, Jeremy, if we have any more of those um, reports that Dr. Davidson gave us um, last semester, but incorporating that in the process, because though we are representing the students, we also want to be in alignment in some ways, so to speak, to the institution's interest as well, um, in interconnecting the students' interest with that. So that's piece one. Piece two to this body is um, we all will have Juneteenth off this year. It is now a state holiday. Um, and so I ex the president and founder of Black Era, we lobbied on that bill and we also got in MSU Denver to endorse it. But what that means is on that day, I'm encouraging you all to imagine and reimagine as you represent not only your interests, but the interests of students, specifically from the Black, African, Caribbean, mixed, um, and Afro Latin ex communities. What does this day mean and what does reimagining higher education for this body of people look like? Knowing that we weren't free and we were still working as enslaved folk. And so when we're reimagining re the higher educational footprint and trying to meet the needs of the various bodies of community folk here, I don't know anybody's ancestry and I don't need to, but how are you all going to ensure that you're representing the interests of Black people? I don't know, but I encourage you on June 19th, which is a Sunday, um, if you all are free to attend the Juneteenth Music Festival, it will be in the Five Points um, community, which is also a part of our district in District 9. Um, and then I also encourage you on June 20th, which is that Monday, um, I'm inviting you all um, into a conversation with Black Era to see what are your ideas on how to reimagine the experience of this group of people. Thank you. Um, I have something what? public public to say. I don't know if someone raised their hand. I can't see if they did or not, but I I can't raise mine for some reason. My computer doesn't have the button. Well, let's um allow. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's actually we have another public somebody from the public here to um, make a public comment and we put them off till the end. So Chad, do you want to make a comment? Um, I, I can, but uh, it sounded like Naomi's was semi urgent. So I, I have it all written down so I can wait if you need to go right now. 
Yeah, if, actually, if you don't mind, just because I do have an appointment um, here at 415 and I had to leave at like 345. Um, but just to kind of like piggyback also off of, I think that was X, I can't tell from the video, but um, I just wanted to uh, kind of initiate on that and tell him that also, uh, as in my position, I did want to not only uh, represent Native and Indigenous students on campus as well, um, and just be that voice for them, but also to have a meeting with the BIPOC student org leaders to see later within this school year, you know, because everyone's in, you know, summer vacation. I don't want to interrupt that. Um, but I do want to get a hold of as many representatives from those orgs to have a large meeting with the um, as many people from TSAC if, as um, whoever would like to join, I do mean, um, and see how we can make this school more culturally engaged because let's face it, they talk about diversity and inclusion, but they're not really doing anything to step on that and step up in that, I'm sorry, and actually represent us by other than having like, you know, student orgs or scholarships and things like that. And it's honestly quite uh, offensive. So I wanna make sure that not only my native and indigenous people are supported because um, we don't even have a land acknowledgement. We have the Auraria campus displaced people like, okay, cool, but you're on stolen land and that needs to be recognized um, on the daily. And also black indigenous people of color need to like come together and make sure that all of our cultures are being represented. So I wanna get a meeting with everybody and see how we can come together and do that and make um, the university be held accountable for their mission statement as well. So um, there's that. And uh, mm -hmm. there was something else he had mentioned as well, but that's all I can think of. So I just wanna assure you that like, in, in my in my standpoint, like I did have some ideas I wanted to bring to the table later, but um, oh, and real quick, um, so I'm going to have a meeting this coming uh, Monday with some uh, people to get some key points ready for um, those of you who went to the Capitol with me. I did propose that I wanted to get a class um, for Native Studies to be a mandatory class that is required to graduate from MSU Denver. Um, and although I have already in my student org separately done stuff to get this set up, um, other university leaders really enjoyed this idea and they wanted to get um, some more information on it, but we need to, I had to come up with some key points to, I guess, make the meeting go as smooth as possible. Um, but um, once we get that meeting done, I will be having another meeting with as many student or, or um, I'm sorry, uh, student government leaders as possible, as many I can get a hold of. So if any of you guys would like that, uh, like to be a part of that meeting, um, please direct message me on Teams and I will uh, make sure that I keep you up to date on all those um, meetings and such and uh, let you know when it's gonna happen, what time and make sure I can get it on like a schedule where enough people can join. Anyway, uh, X. Yeah, Naomi. Do you uh, actually mind if I go? Because I do have to leave. I was hoping to get this out at the beginning. But, I do um, mind because I wanted to respond to her comment because she was wondering whether or not it was me. So if you would allow me to yield and then I will wrap it up. But yes, Naomi, it is me. And to your sentiment, yes, MSU Denver isn't doing enough in terms of the diversity and inclusion here. It is in some ways performative. And I did speak to the Board of Trustees about that today. Um, but I can say from my conversation with them during that meeting, they are interested in creating a space of belonging for the various groups of people here. They did not do the land acknowledgement when they did their opening today. Um, so to your point of, yes, we have a land acknowledgement, but it's not always utilized. Um, and so we are on stolen land and we do need to not just acknowledge it, but in my opinion, give it back. But yes, I'm willing to meet with you. So I'll email you. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I do have to get going, but um, thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Chad. Um, so I just wanted to say congrats to everyone here who got elected. Um, I know it was a very quick and rough process, so thanks for being all um, very chill in it and working within it. Um, I just wanted to appeal to you guys because personally, uh, I do think elections is an extremely important part of maintaining and upholding democracy. And I do view the university as kind of a microcosm of that democracy. Um, essentially, if students feel they can be politically active at university, hopefully they'll be politically active in society at large. Um, so I just wanted to appeal to you guys because election services is beholden to, to uh, the council's funding of us to do our work. Um, so I just wanted to basically come here while hopefully catching the majority of you guys, which it looks like I did, um, and just appeal to you to like keep it in mind. Um, 
that election services has to be funded through the council. Um, and so hopefully you do partition some of your budget to ensure that happens. And ultimately um, that it happens for a more extended period, um, six weeks, there was a lot that uh, we would have liked to have done, but couldn't accomplish. Um, so preferably if we had a much larger time span, we could accomplish things such as um, debates, uh, candidate meet and greets, stuff like that, or just public um, events. Um, also as well, there is a lot of background work that has to go in this semester as well. I, um, I think all of you understood that we use single transferable vote this semester or this last term uh, to elect everyone. Um, I just want to say it went off ex extremely successfully. We had a double blind test. Um, I think Dave can vouch for that and our results came out correct or not correct. But our results matched on both ends. Um, so we're extremely confident in the outcome of those results. Um, additionally, us instituting STV puts uh, MSU Denver with only six other universities in the country right now, of which MIT, Princeton and UC Berkeley are some of those. Um, hopefully, we're also looking to work with the other elections teams from UC Denver and CCD to establish more of a tri-institutional election services, and this will cut down on certain costs like debates, for example, um, but other things too. Um, so. I'm just here today to appeal to you guys to um, please be very conscious and think about funding because election services does need money and budget to hold events like this. And I'm also here for any questions if you have any. Thank you, Chad. Thanks, Chad. Thank you for waiting too. Yeah, I appreciate that. We don't. Um, yeah, I'll just say it, Chad. Um, so Dan and I are on the budget committee. So um, I, I, I um, I think we can definitely uh, talk to you more thoroughly about this to see how we can fit into the budget and work with you on this. Oh, yeah, sorry. That was one last thing I wanted to say. I think um, we definitely want a lot more cooperation uh, with the council. Uh, hopefully an increased time frame would allow for something like that to happen. Um, so, yeah, please, uh, please do. When do you think of the process of election should start next time? Oh, um, preferably we want elections to occur before spring break. I think following spring break, there's just a lot of burnout. I think we all know this as students, like when we get back from that week, in some cases, two weeks uh, of vacation, um, you know, we want finals and to get the hell out of school. So um, really, I think it's imperative that elections occur before spring break, which means all of the background logistics stuff needs to occur in the fall. Yeah, and a little uh, background. So traditionally, the elections team would be hired um, late fall semester, and they would start over winter break. Uh, that's been the tradition this year. Obviously, it was much later. Um, I think Ch what Chad is trying to propose is having that team start even sooner than that, um, as in early fall, right? Maybe. Um, I think the sooner the better, but we can definitely talk about that. Yeah, and then. My other comment and then uh, I'm done is um, the other thought was in regards to how elections are held. So prior, I think four years ago, four elections ago, um, AHEC used to manage the election. So it was a tri-institutional effort. At that point in time, each institution was getting roughly 2000 votes in their elections because it was a big tri-institutional effort. All three schools came together. They, they, you know, they had their resources, their people. Um, since each institution has gone to their own individual elections, numbers have gone way down. So for MSU Denver, we've been in the hundreds for the past few years um, per year. CU Denver this past election only had 300 students vote. Um, prior to that, they were in the thousands just like we were. Um, so it's it's quite clear. I think there's other factors, but it's clear that the need to bring that tri-institutional effort back is is needed. Um, for the support of each institution and, and really raising visibility. Um, so just my plug there. Um, yeah. Paul. Being five minutes past, I'd just like to motion to adjourn. Good. I had a closing thought. Also with elections, one of the things that drove it was RTD. So when we- Well, voted, I appreciate your comment, Exa. We should move to consider the vote on the table. Okay, sorry. We're going to vote. Alan. Voting to adjourn the meeting. Oh, this is a motion to adjourn the meeting. 
motion. I, I support the motion. Yay. Michael. I support the motion as well. James. Aye. Bree. I, I'd like to talk to X another time though about this. Thank you. Hey, Taylor. Uh, I say no. Gabe. I. Naomi is gone, it looks like. Um, and Paul. Aye. All right, it passes. All right, so I guess the meeting's adjourned. Um, thank you all.